Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back at uh, making the Counters Run Simulator. And uh, last episode we did have a quick look at our drop algorithm and found out that it was inadequate. And since then I've doing, been doing some more research and I've been helped by Glenn who dug up some uh, interesting information for me. Uh, including the actual treasure class document. And from that, we uh, are able to decipher how this should actually function. And no, there is no real way of making this work without simulating it properly. And that will be today's uh, first and uh, I guess the main topic. Get the, the algorithm up to snuff and to uh, actually drop it just like it is calculated in game. No guesses, nothing. It's just one to one as if it were the game calculating this. This is how we're going to do it. And what we have here is the relevant information we need for that. So how does this work? Well, let me start at the beginning. I'm probably going to make a separate video for this uh, once the, the tool is all done. Uh, just because, well, wh why not? Um, would be nice as part of the Countess Run series, right? To look at the actual statistics. Uh, yeah, it should be part of the uh, the fourth video, which I promised with the series for the um, Countess Run uh, mini series. Hey guys, this is Future Rob speaking. Future Rob from episode nine. Yes, that far into the future, three days into the future. Not, not really. I, I did this stuff yesterday in, in Killrob time. But anyway, I did do a mistake while explaining what was going on. And that mistake you will see manifest in what I'm putting into code. It is a minor mistake that has big consequences for the drop statistics. But there are a few things that I'm going to work out in this episode you're watching right now. And I believe in showing you the process regardless, even though it's wrong. But I do want to give you straight up the correct explanation of what should be going on so that you don't have to listen to 10 minutes of me going through an algorithm which doesn't actually work that way. So um, let me run you through what is going on with how the counters drop system actually works. So we do have our little treasure classes for runes over here and the counters by default in hell difficulty uh, drops uh, this treasure class 12 which contains rune 24 and 23 that is ist and mal. It has a two picks chance here and or not really picks it's two probability chance here and a free probability there out of 1066 at this time in the original recording i think these numbers were still wrong and that is due to something you will discover in a little while uh, anyway so what happens here if rune uh, treasure class 12 is selected to drop then it goes in here, looks at, oh, okay, 3 out of uh, 1071, you sum up all the probabilities, and that gives you the total, and then you take this value, 3, and divide by the total sum of probability, uh, that one, to get the, the actual drop chance for that rune. Okay, same with this one, the R24, uh, but that one has a 2 probability instead of 3. And there is this one, item 3, which has a massive probability, almost all the probabilities going there, that is the lower rune class from there. And here you need to observe that this is the case for all runes going down, all the way to rune treasure class number 1, which has the L and Eld rune in it, with the L rune having a higher chance to drop than the Eld rune. But there is no no drop and there is only a total probability of 5. So there will always be a rune dropping from that. Okay, so that is simple enough. The counters can get up to rune treasure class 14, but that is not the counter specific drop. Uh, this is the normal monster drop she can have. 
uh, as part of dropping these things, which we are going to talk about uh, very, very soon. And that one goes up to a low rune, which is rune 28. And a chance of 2 out of 2,175. Okay, uh, so how does the actual Countess drop work? Well, Countess is here. Let's do the Hell Countess as an example. We do have a Pix number of minus 2. That means that there are two guaranteed picks, And everything needs to be picked from left to right. And the probability gives you how many picks that um, item takes up. So here we only have two different things, each with a, a pick slot of one or pick probability of one, which means that we have to pick both. Now let's check what both of these means. First, it has to be picked left to right, remember. So first, it needs to generate counter's item. Okay, let's check what counter's item hell, in this case, is. Counter's item hell has five picks out of these things. And that would be um, no drop, 19% chance on players one, that is. It has 11% chance to drop gold. It has uh, some other percentages to drop some normal equipment and some uh, junk. But also it has the chance of three to drop act two hell good. That is another treasure class. So three out of how many? 68. If you sum these up, that is 68. And this one is a pandemonium key, by the way. One out of 68. Okay, so let's assume that we actually have rolled this one. What happens then? Okay, then we have to check this treasure class. What is in that treasure class, you ask? Well, it has one pick and it can pick between these items. Jewelry, 60. Chip gem, flawed gem, normal gem, flawless gem. Okay, some gems. But also runes, 14. And it has a, a probability of 14. The total probability is 130. So the probability of, with one pick, getting into, into this one, actually picking this act too good treasure class is 3 out of 68 times 14 divided by 130. But remember there are five chances to get there. There are five chances in here and the best thing that can happen is that you either get this uh, and a no drop which is this because the countess has a drop limit of six items in total and runes count as uh, runes counts as items as well as normal items all items count as items so the only way to get the uh, maximum amount of runes uh, well the maximum amount of runes is always six because she can drop everything but if we get let's say four drops in total from these then we move on we were stuck up here. You remember we had five picks. Let's say we have used up all of them. And we still have two slots left to drop. Then it continues on and goes to this one and says, Oh, yeah, we are guaranteed this one too. So what is this one? Countess Rune. It goes in here. Countess Rune Hell. It has three picks. And three picks at 75% chance to actually pick this one. So there's a 15, uh, 15 probability points chance to pick runes 12 and there's a 5 probability points um, chance to not select anything. If it selects the runes 12, we've already talked about what happens then. Then it goes in here and it has a guaranteed rune drop. How high it is, that depends on the rune treasure class it finally ends up with and uh, what it rolls in here. But yeah, that is how that system works. So the best case scenario is if you do not drop five actual items, but rather leave spaces open for the three picks of um, counter specific runes, which have 75% chance of dropping for each of these picks. 
But only up to six items, remember, only up to six items. That is why we do want to have um, some of these roll in the no drop over here, because these items are generated first and then the runes. And this is the reason for why higher player numbers work really, really poorly with the counters. The higher you set the player number, the lower the actual drop chance. And at players 8, this becomes very small. And that means that on average, you will be seeing much closer to only one rune drop. And that is also something I observed when running the counters on players 8 to try it out. So uh, yeah, instead of two point something drops, you instead get, uh, uh, or well, uh, close to um, two drops. I think it's 1.85, 1.87 around there on average in runes. Uh, but yeah, that would drop uh, tremendously when you're on players eight. Okay, I hope this was a decent explanation of how the system works. Um, remember, past Killer Rob will stumble with this and he will think that this is actually a separate drop from these things occurring. And that leads to all kinds of uh, terrible stuff as well as these numbers being different. So lots of confusion, but it's still fun to see the process. All right, Future Rob signing out. So let's get started, I, I guess. I guess we get started. It's a little scary, but um, at least we will get it right this time. I think the smartest thing is to just divide it up by difficulty. Oh, that is actually a pretty big simplification. Now we can change our drop chance big tables for like two lists per difficulty, except normal. We can just change to a generic um, treasure rune treasure class drop chance list. That sounds a lot better to me. Uh, I have to think about how I best divide that up. Okay, here we go. So, no more matrices of uh, rune chances, but rather we just have a single, uh, single array with the rune chances for each individual rune, um, starting at zero, the zeroth rune, the infamous one, and we have the list for 14 rune treasure classes, which are all that are relevant to us. Uh, yes, I could make them all the way up to Zod, but wh why would I? This is about the Countess, after all. It's very specialized. Um, all right, so that's that's all good. So now I have the Rune Treasure class chances in here as well, which is the sum of all chances, the no drop chance plus the individual chances to actually drop the rune, while the individual chances to drop the rune are listed here. Okay, very good. So now we need to use that new data in our drop algo. Okay, I believe I have that part done, the little first part, but I did write it in a very generic way that allows us to use it on any difficulty at any point. Uh, it auto repeats itself if I haven't fucked it up. So <clears throat> let me show it to you. Um, we have here baked in the 75% the chance to actually go into this. Um, if it doesn't go into it, then we just continue with our other drops. If it does go into it, that is if 0.75 is larger than a random number between 0 and 1, which is 75% of the time, uh, then we go in here. Then we sect, uh, select the rune treasure class depending on difficulty, 14, 8 and 4 respectively. And then I just start a, a loop a whatever loop. Uh, I I don't know how to do a whatever loop, so I just did a while loop while the treasure class is larger than zero, which it always is. Uh, yeah, programming noob. Um, so here I then define our role, our one role, and that one is just a random number between zero and one. Once again, 
<clears throat> then I um, check the current drop chance at the current treasure class for the rune that has index two times treasure class, which would at level four, uh, at rune treasure class 14 would be 28 and rune index 28 is a low rune. Okay, yeah, makes perfect sense. And divide that by the treasure class overall chance, which I did define in the data manager over here, rune TC. So it would be divided by this number. Just put the index in there as the treasure class then. Okay, let's head back to the script. Uh, so we have that going for us there. And rune two drop chance is the same, but uh, two times the rune treasure class minus one. So if it's 14, then we end up at 27. Uh, which is, oh, wait, wait a second, is this? No, not, I did say low rune, right? That is uh, not correct. That would be an Ist rune and a Mal rune. Is, is that correct? Let me just double check. 14. Uh, runes 14 here. No, this this is actually low rune. I'm uh, doing things wrong. Good thing I checked. This should be 12 and, no, and not 14. 14 is the uh, super class. Okay, found it. This should be 12. All right. So, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, it does matter, but uh, the explanation remains the same. So I ch save the chances for the runes, uh, the absolute chances of dropping, and then I check if the roll, uh, roll we had, this one, is um, smaller or equal to that drop chance, then you have rolled the um, the first rune. They, uh, they cannot both rule, uh, roll at the same time, so we're safe here. And that is how it works, like they are they are rolled in parallel. Um, and then we have a, if the roll is between roll chance one and roll chance one plus roll chance two, then we generate the other room. Okay, yeah, yeah, makes sense. And then we break the loop, which I hope gets us out of the while loop. And we increment the uh, number of items dropped and the number of runes dropped in this case. Do we need that? Yeah, because we were in the loop that actually dropped uh, a rune guaranteed. Okay, I've made it a little nicer so <laughs> that we don't have to repeat a lot of code. Uh, just made up a new script, which is this one. I just copied over the specific algorithm to um, determine which rune drops if that rune was was given. So if it was chosen, it was, if it was rolled with 75% chance that, that, uh, that a rune will actually drop, then we go into this code which determines which rune drops and that is difficulty independent because this one takes care of everything. So that is good. But this is the counter specific drop not the counters uh, unspecific one. For that, I will have to do a very similar script, but with different treasure classes here. Okay, this special drop has now its base structure. We are going to go through it pick by pick, starting at pick one until we have uh, finished all six picks. Um, oh, there needs to be a special condition here that it breaks in case uh, we have reached six drops in total. But anyway, uh, so one chance is to roll three out of eight, uh, 68, and that is to get into the potential uh, rune dropping other treasure class. And then we have a roll for between 3 uh, 68 and the sum of the no drop plus uh, that good treasure class, which gives us the case for the no drop. Also very important. And else we just generate an item. And I'm going to fill these out first and add the extra check down here. And then I start filling the more intricate drop down here.
Ah, hey, I made a new script, which is basically the same as this one, but with a small difference, and that is the that this is the non-specific rune drop. And that means that we get in here for the difficulties with somewhat different chances for, or not chances, but rather uh, different starting positions for the rune treasure class. 14, 9 and 2 or 1. Yes, I'm going to uh, do this slightly differently with the same outcome. I believe that would be exactly the same. We're currently looking at these. The act to good treasure classes. And... It is straightforward for um, Nightmare and Hell with 14 out of 130. It's all good. But then for normal difficulty, you have a chance of Rune Treasure Class 1, 3, and Rune Treasure Class 2, 3. So equal chance, 50 50 between those. If you. At 6 out of 42 represents both. Uh, both treasure classes for the runes, respectively. And, oh, well, no, in total. So, you roll a rune, and then I say, okay, we have rolled a rune, which one out of these two classes is it? And that is done here. So, rune treasure class equals to minus a random integer in the interval 0 to 1. Right, that should have the same effect as actually doing it the proper way but this should be the proper way uh, anyway so this is why we're dealing with that and there's nothing we need to change in this code really not even really but it's just matter of fact yes so overall we are now using this script for the six counter specific item drops and I can redu uh, remove this chance. Oh, no, I'm going to need it. 67. No, I can remember that. Okay. So uh, what I'm doing here is loop through uh, all six picks. I um, generate two rolls at the start. And that is for every pick, I re-roll that stat, these two. If the roll is a, um, a good treasure class... Then we go in here and check if that good treasure class rolled a rune or not. If it did, then we uh, go in here and generate a counter's non-specific rune and add to the rune drops. And add to the items dropped regardless of it hitting this 14 out of 130 because then a drop is guaranteed. So if that happens, this should be counted up, and if this not doesn't happen, then this one should also be counted up. If another item drops, so we are jumping over the 19 out of 68 no drop chance, then we just count up the items dropped. If we are inside this, then I don't have to do anything, so I don't have to write code for it. So that's how we roll here. Then we have a quick check at the end to see if we already have six items and yeah if uh, that isn't the case then the for loop continues with the next pick and now the only thing left is to do with up to three picks for more runes to drop more counter specific runes to drop so very simple and i only need to check every time that we have not uh, exceeded the or uh, have filled up the allowed number of items, six items. Oh my, quick and ugly, quick and quick and ugly, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> so we just do the final three uh, counter specific rune drops by checking, do we have less than six items? If so, then we roll a random and check if it's um, within the 0.75 and then do call the script and then just repeat that uh, two more times and that's it so now we should have everything that is needed let's just check if the yay all the parentheses are actually closed so the only thing i need to do now is to copy paste this three times and adjust the chances here according to um, the treasure classes 
Yeah, and then uh, that should be our new algorithm. I think we've wrapped it up here. Uh, so now I'm going to show the number of number of drops. That means the number of runes found and the number of items dropped after 100 runs. Mm, okay. And probably with so much new code and loads and loads of shit, um, there might be some bugs. Uh, we, we'll figure them out. So we have changed uh, everything, basically. <laughs> and this is, should be the completed algorithm. Um, let's launch the game. Let's save for, for, for the first time. Um, let's launch the game. Uh, game tool. And... Try it out. Does it compile? Uh, it's looking good. Yes. Yes, this is this is all nice. This is still working. And do we crash it? No, we didn't. Whoa! <laughs> bug free, bug free. Whoa. Uh, bug free? Maybe not so bug free. I don't think we should find four ohm runes <laughs> in 100 runs. <laughs> that is the luckiest run ever. There's something wrong here. Oh yeah, yeah, there's something wrong here. Um, but I see what is, what is wrong here, and that is that we are not. Okay, six items is the most common. Five items, four items. Three items, two items, zero, one item. Okay, so the item count seems to be working. We had plenty of one drops, not enough two drops. It doesn't seem to cycle through the treasure classes as it should. Uh, yeah, maybe that is rather obvious. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, rather obvious bug. It took about two seconds to spot. Rune TZ is never actually decreased. Rune TZ by TZ minus minus, and that should be it. Okay, because it just stayed in here until it rolled one of those runes. <laughs> oh, that would be so nice. Or rather, it wouldn't. It would be an excellent source for ist runes. I think more people would run that place. Uh, like this, and we do need to do the same thing here, and that should solve it. So let's relaunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go ahead. This should fix it. And there we go. Ah, no more. Oh, this looks a lot better. Oh, we found one lem. We found three loom. Ooh, only one eye? Hell, Doll, Shire, Sol, um, and lots of garbage runes. Oh, no, there's something wrong here. It is falling through like crazy. 46 L runes, that is not how it works. Okay, so why doesn't that quite work? Okay, I've been staring at this for quite a while and did some more calculations. Well, not this. I'm just checking my old calculations. Uh, let's see, where are these? All rune stats uh, right here. Okay, so there is a little bit of a discrepancy here, which um, I believe lies in not a bug, but rather in the wrong data. 10,000 counters runs incoming on hell difficulty and done. Okay. Well, that was quick. So we found. Oh, we found no high runes. Oh, that's, that's stupid. Found nine ists. Only nine ists. Yeah, you see that, that something is broken there. Only nine ist runes? In 10,000 runs? That's way too low. Okay, so we go through here and you see. This is way... yeah. L and Eld. 3,700 and They are not common. Look at this distribution. This is all fucked up. I, the, the peak is supposed to be at Tal and Ral and Ort. That is where the, the biggest part of them should be. 
and we see they are all grouped down here. Like El, Eld and Tier. Also, just to make sure, I have rechecked the data. All even runes, uh, all even rune numbers have the probability of 2 and all odd numbered runes have a probability of 3. That is correct here as well. And I have double checked the overall drop ratios in here for the various rune treasure classes. And they are the sum here. So I'm tempted to say that maybe these are old patch uh, probabilities. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Look at that. Look at that. That was correct, Kill Rob. You were correct. These are the 1.13 drop rates. And now let's compare to this here. So the important thing is the sum. Uh, we do have two in here. What? What? Two? Uh, runes one only has two chance to get there. So this overall is five plus two is seven instead of 14. So yep, that is go what is going on here. That is indeed what is going on here. So these are just uh, wrong numbers. I have here. Yeah, okay, let me fix that. Um, and let me check all the treasure classes that are affected just so that we do it right. Wow, what a massive difference. Look at that. 360, 720 here instead of 2000 something. Okay, that is definitely a solution. Okay, all changed. So now we are back here and shall try once again to see if that was indeed all that needed to be fixed. And 10,000 runs complete. Um, we found one ghoul rune. Okay, that, that's fine. 31 ist runes. Ah, <laughs> that is the correct amount. Yes, 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 yes. That is the correct amount, child. Um, yes. Perfect. Perfect, guys. Perfect. We got it. We got it. Eth, Plenty, Tal, Ort. Ort and Tal. The two most common runes dropped from the counters. There we have it. This is exactly the results we expect. And the Eld rune is the least common among the common runes. Yep, that is exactly what we would expect. Okay, no drop, 1.9%. Uh, uh, that looks slightly high. Four drop, but hmm, yeah, there's something wrong here, sir. Four drop should be at sub 1%, but the no drop is uh, I should do a, a quick calculation here what these numbers actually mean. Okay, yeah, uh, you can probably not really see that, but we do currently have a, a zero drop chance in here of 3.38% and a four drop chance of 7.3% and it should be sub 1%. Uh, so these numbers are reasonably accurate. 300 runs is enough to roughly establish these. So we should be around a 2% mark for no drops and around 1% for four drops and we are not. So I need to do some more digging on how uh, that exactly is handled. But for now, I would say that yes, we have the correct distribution of runes. So our new algorithm does work for the most part. Um, we just need to be able to handle these chances a bit a uh, bit more like the, the, the distribution. What we uh, did here with the items, uh, allowing for more items, did help. Uh, but it seems still be to, to be too much zero drops in there. 
Anyway, enough for today. Lots of runing, lots of algorithm crafting. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time. <laughs>